Hello. Today, I'm going to talk about the fact that we are supposed to guard our hearts and why it is good to guard our hearts. The Bible says to guard our hearts. So that is my topic for today. And just so you know, all of what I shared in January on this channel, Julie K. Pebbles here, Julie K. Helping you find your way through grief and loss is um, really specifics about expectations. Yes, but that is really um, the thrust of behind that is guarding your heart. That those are ways to guard your heart. And so, and I want you to know that not only that, going forward, a lot of what I'm going to share on this channel, um, maybe throughout the year or, you know, definitely ongoing for a little while here, will have to do with guarding your heart. Okay. So I wanted to focus in on that today because uh, I am an ordained minister. I love the word of God and the word of God is powerful and um, so good for us. And it's our salvation. It's our help. It's our wisdom. It's our practical day-to-day -day life. The word can help us with all of that. So the verse that talks about guarding your heart is in Proverbs uh, 4, 23. So um, this is what it says. Now, whenever I bring a verse up, I usually have looked it up on Google and I put in the verse. So I put in Proverbs 4, 23, and then I put in the word lexicon. And when you do that, the original uh, meaning with the original words and more of the true meaning kind of broken down in a graph show up on those first um, selections you can pick. And that goes for the Old Testament or the New Testament. So here's what it says. Watch or guard. It also mentions keep. Watch, guard, and keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Now that is the NASB, the closest version to the original. But to break that down a little bit, um, when it says your heart, it means also your mind, your inner man, and your will. And it, with all is very literal, all, the whole or all. Um, diligence is not really the original um, wording there. It's They used a couple different words that I thought were interesting that I won't get into because it may confuse things, but they use the word observance. So it's kind of observing, you know, looking at your heart, observing your heart. And as I mentioned before, part of what we're doing in this whole series from the beginning of this year and what I'm a lot about is our mental health. With grief, a lot of it is our mental health. And if we don't work on our mental health, we can't help our physical health. We can't help our choices. We can't help our relationships. All of everything pretty much flows out of our minds. So I want to help you with your minds and therefore help you with the rest of your life. That's overall um, what I am doing with, with these messages I'm bringing to you. So to observe your heart is kind of like what we were saying. You need to think about our thinking, okay? Sorry about that. So I want to give you the definition of diligence because that is one way that it's interpreted. It's the effort to do one's part while keeping faith and reliance and trusting God. And that's exactly what I ended on two weeks ago um, with my last teaching in this series, because last week I, I did a movie review. So check it out if you want to on a man called Otto. So um, diligence. But what this word is using is observe, observe observance which is to notice or perceive as being significant. So either way, it's kind of like looking, um, you know, analyzing your own heart. Okay. So same with thinking about your thinking. So same kind of thing. Um, now, no, now I want you, what I want to do is empower you to not be offended in the first place. So that's why I bring up my first point today was that the Bible says to guard your heart. So that should B is I encourage you to make that as part of your aim, part of your um, self-care, part of your what you learn how to do, because we're not going to digest this all in this video. OK, what is it to guard your heart? Um, but I will continue to talk about it. So the second point I want to bring up today, um, first of all, I want to go to Luke 17, 1 in order to talk about that. So if you have your Bible, turn to Luke 17, 1. And here it is. Um, Things that cause people, this is Jesus speaking, by the way, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. 
there's definitely, I think, different ways to interpret what this is talking about. But I heard a, a teaching by Gary Rowe yesterday, and he was covering some of this, um, and he referred to that. And I thought, I think that definitely applies to this. Um, it can be literally being tempted to sin and fall with the different issues we have, like, you know, drinking or drugs or um other big things, gossip, et cetera. But I think it does, I think this could definitely pertain to um, people doing something that would cause us to be offended, saying something or doing something to cause that could tempt us to be offended, tempt us to be offended. But I think that's a good thing to clarify that it's a temptation to be offended. We don't have to be offended, okay? So with that, I believe if we realize that we are going to be tempted to be offended. We are going to feel hurt at times by what people say, but it's how much do we let that in? How much do we really get that in our heart to where we really have a major issue towards that person now that we need to forgive and work through versus guarding our heart and then we don't, we release it quicker and it, it goes away quicker. Um, so I think if we accept that fact that those are gonna come, it's gonna happen, in our lives with family, church, work, friends, wherever, any relationship we're in, right? Our spouses, especially spouses, right? Um, it's going to happen. And if we accept that as a fact that it's part of life, uh, our pastor used to say that, get, get ready, offenses are going to come this year. It sounds like a very negative thing, but it's a very realistic thing. And if you see the reality of that, you're less likely to be offended. Hey, you know, because you're accepting the reality and your expectations are lower. So there's one little tip I have for you today. Um, and that will help you guard your heart. Okay. So my third point today I want to share is that we have a choice. Again, we have a choice. We don't have to be offended. And when we give up that choice and we choose to be offended, um, we are letting others to have control of our hearts. And we therefore don't have that same control that of all those things that are in our control versus what's already out of our control. Why do we want to hand over that to somebody else? It's, it's not what we really, I think any of us really ultimately want. We want to feel in control of our lives. We want to be able to exercise our choices in the areas that we can. So let's not do that. Let's not give it over to somebody else. Um, and the fourth one is that another consequence to choosing to be offended is that we are hurting our relationship with God. And you know, to realize that God, like I said two, two um, videos ago at the end, I talked briefly about how I chose to believe God was good through the whole situation that I went through with my daughter dying and then my grandkids, um, trying to get them and then not being able to get them. So this is what I chose to do. And it's part of what got me through this is I chose to believe God was good no matter what, not based on my feelings or my circumstance. And I chose to trust him. So with that said, if you agree with me that to trust God is the right one to trust in and to put our hope in God, not in people is the smart way to go, right? It is the smart way to go. And that's what I talked about again, two videos ago. Please go watch it. Um, if you haven't heard it already and um, seen it, you know, then do you want to isolate yourself from God or hurt your connection, hurt your relationship? Our pastor put his connection. I thought that was one good way to put it. He talked about how we're on a phone and then all of a sudden we lose connection with somebody. It's, you know, you could relate it to losing connection with God. It doesn't mean you've lost that relationship, right? If I'm talking to my husband and all of a sudden, you know, something goes on with the towers or whatever and I lose him, now I can't communicate with him what I need to or listen to him, what he's trying to tell me that could be very important. So that could cause some problems, but it doesn't mean that relationship's over, but it does cause problems. We don't want to do that with God. If we know that God's good and he loves us and he's the answer and he's the way and all good things come from him, all blessing comes from him, all peace comes from him because he does promise that, then we don't want to hurt that relationship with him, right? So when you choose to be offended, you hurt that. You hurt that connection, not forever, as long as you repent and you forgive and you get right with him only as long as you allow it. But why do that at all? Because you do have to fight to get back to that. There is a process of having to try to get back to that. We'll talk in the future about, but let's not do that to begin with, right? Because we need him. 
we need all the help we can get through grief and loss and trauma. And trauma is, is always involved loss, by the way. Whatever difficult things we're going through, okay? We need his help. Trust me, if you don't know that already, you need his help. He's there. He loves you. He wants to help you so bad. Um, he's not against you. We need to ask him to forgive us, yes, but he is not against us. So let's not hurt our relationship with him, okay? So that's overall what I wanted to share with you guys today. And um, if you have any questions, please contact me. And again, I will um, try to put the link in the, in the description here um, so that you can set up a one-to-one -one with me on Zoom. Um, or if you're local, Newport Ritchie you might be able to come over um, so that we can talk about more of this. Because if you don't, um, not used to hearing these kind of messages or don't have any clue how not to be offended and you just always get hurt or offended or angry or what have you with certain people or, you know, maybe nowhere else, but just my family. That's a common one, you know, and you want to learn how to work through this. I have learned how to work through this, still working through stuff. I would love to help you. Okay. Reach out to me, Julie K, helping you find your way. This means I love you in sign language, <laughs> just in case you didn't know. So God bless you. I care and signing off for next week. Bye-bye.